Hey everyone, our Kickstarter has blown past our expectations and I can't thank you enough. Because of your support, we're able to level up the shop, new gear, new tools, new machines to bring the Smith Blade to life. These vlogs are where we'll keep you posted about how things are going and we hope you have as much fun watching the progress as we have making it. In this vlog, we're installing two Sile CNC machines. This was actually filmed before we launched the Kickstarter. So the plans have changed a lot. Now that we have more of a plan, we're going to get caught up on these, on these vlogs. The new plan is to install a lot of machines. Um, I have more than 20 additional machines on order that are arriving soon. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be installing two machines. So enjoy. We just got the truck with our brand new Style X5 and X7. These machines are gonna be running 24 seven to produce as many Smith blades as we can in-house. Looks pretty good actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've done ways to get here. Just don't like to do it with a $60,000 machine. You know it's expensive when Ian is careful. You gotta lean back for it. Let's get these machines off the trailer, in the shop, set up. Just a normal day at the office. <laughs> You guys more excited yeah. about the CNC or the, the pallets? No, it's just like, well, when you move something, <laughs> when you move something this heavy, right, you gotta, you can't put it on like a wood pallet. Is it big, like the CJ? <laughs> You pick these then? I wanted more of those, but we had to get one of those if we want any number of machines. 20,000 RPM spindle. Okay. I'm trying to cut everything here. And you're doing it wrong, eh? Yeah. All right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that control. Oh. You look comfy. I am, actually. <laughs> I feel swabby. Oh. He's gooning over these machines right now. This is where it goes black. Oh, I need a minute with these. Oh, I think this is a touch screen, too. Oh. Oh. Then why are your pants all wet? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's the machines, they're covered in water. Oh yeah. Oh baby. Look at this side. I am suited up, booted, and ready to rock. What do you got going on? I'm spraying the wall so this doesn't look like a green screen. Anywhere in the world to be right now. I don't know, maybe Asgard. Rubicon's a good planet. I've heard great things. A lot of fire though. Might be uh, a little toasty in that garbage bag there. Yeah, it's going to be. I wasn't originally going to say anything, but I kind of like what you got going on. Very slender. Lay that on there. All right, so you might have noticed that we built a wall here. And why would we build a wall? Well. We're using this area to manufacture the, the Smith blade, and when you're running a bunch of CNC machines, it gets loud. It, loud is an issue because we also film stuff here, and we don't want the noise pollution from manufacturing interrupting all of the videos that we want to make on the other side of the shop. So we built a wall, and we're actually going to need to build another wall. We're setting up to do the other processes right here. If the Kickstarter goes well, then hopefully we'll have a few more CNC machines here. But for now, it's going to be things like tumbling and uh, pressing parts in and just like minor operations right here. And then we're going to have to build another wall somewhere around here. And again, depends on how the Kickstarter goes of does the wall go here? Does the wall go here? How many CNC machines do we need? That all depends on how the Kickstarter goes. Oh, this is actually pretty sick. This one, these doors have electronic latches. Basically. This one's fast. But no chipping damage, man? They look fine. The door's a little scuffed on that one. The X5, we can fully get up against this. Yeah. Same with the X7. Uh, the machine comes bolted down to the pallet. So we gotta take the big studs that hold the machine down out. Oh. James, the machine is broken. It's not working. It's not making any knives. Oh. 
good. Now here's the fun part. Let her down small. car but not new used and like an old lady owned it right we have air on the fourth axis that's sick yeah. i'm gonna need a hand pushing it that was all straight straighter than that straighter than that yeah straighter than that there you go now you're going good look that's not usable at all anymore <laughs> oh no it's fine it <laughs> We have the machines moved into place where they're gonna live. We have to get them wired, plumbed, set up, trained. Then we gotta make fixtures, load tooling, and we can start making knives. Look at what ports I got. Right. Ethernet, USB 3, compact flash. <laughs> That's a choice. Strip the wires on the machine that makes the blade. So these machines run on 380 volts, three phase. That's more of a European standard. At Hacksmith, it comes in from the street at 208 or 123 phase. And then we bump that up to 600, which is what most of our other machines run at. And then it comes over here to that big transformer we just installed, then bumps it down to 380, three phase. Now we're bringing it into the machine. Here's our three phases and the ground wire. And yeah, so really I'm just plugging that in. With two new machines, we need to hold all the tools that we need to make the knives in the machines. In the past, I've done it with ER call it chucks. And this is okay, this is great for prototyping. One holder can hold any number of tools, but it's not ideal. It doesn't hold the tool perfectly on center and it doesn't hold it as stiffly as it could. So we're going to shrink fit for this new system. All these holders have one size hole. They can only hold one specific tool and we have a special piece of equipment we need to install the tool in a holder. So let me go show you that right now. An ER call it chuck has a clamping range of about one millimeter. You can hold a tool that's half a millimeter bigger than your call-out size and half a millimeter smaller normally. Shrink fit, it holds one specific tool size. So this is an eighth inch tool and you see it doesn't even fit in right now. But when we take it, put it in this piece of equipment, give everything a real nice wipe down. All I need to do is hit this heat button. About six seconds later, the tool will drop right into the hole and it'll be shrunk in there. In order to put the knife blank material into the machines, I want it on a system that works in all the machines so I can just drop a pallet into every machine with blanks on it. So I've gone with the Pearson pallet system. It's these modular aluminum pallets, a base in each one of these machines, and then I'm gonna machine these pallets to hold knife blanks. Operator can take this out of the machine, go to their workstation, screw all the blanks in, head into any one of these three machines with the exact same pallets, drop it in, and now the pallets with the blanks are held into every single machine. When we first started this knife project over a year ago, I reached out to Jay Pearson from Pearson Workholding to see if he could supply me with the system so that I can prototype the knives. He was incredibly generous, gave me pallets. So I've done all my prototyping on these pallets. When it came time to outfit the other machines, they gave us a discount on the pallet systems and all the pallets we need for those machines. Special thanks to Jay Pearson from Pearson Workholding for that. Now that the styles are in place, they've been wired, plumbed, leveled, and I've been trained on how to operate them. All I need to do is modify my pre-existing program to run on those machines and we can start making knives. 